Does your audio sound like this? Or like this? In this video, I'm gonna help you make it sound more like this. Three, two, one. Here we go! Hi, and welcome to DIY Film with Merle Becker, the channel where I help you make better videos. As always, stick around to the end of the video for today's filmmaking tip. So you've got your script writing down, you've got your lighting down, and you've got your editing down, but your audio still sounds like garbage. And you've tried what seems like everything, and it still sounds like garbage. Which is unfortunate because having good audio quality is actually more important than having good video. That's right. Consider this. If a video is blurry, but you can still follow the story, you're probably still watching it. But if a video has garbled audio and you can't understand the story, you're turning it off. Which is why I put together this list of three things that you can do to record great audio for your videos and not get turned off. Number one, use an external microphone. Are you using your camera microphone for your audio? This is no good. Or maybe you have a little vlogger style Rode shotgun mounted on top of your camera. I know some people use this, but if you're more than a foot away from your camera, it's not going to produce the best audio. When you're recording audio, you always wanna make sure the microphone is as close to the subject as possible. And if you're using just the mic on the camera, which isn't very good to begin with, you're not only recording with a subpar microphone, but you're also trying to record your subject from too far away. Which is why I use this little lavalier here. It's close to my mouth. As opposed to the camera mic, which is about three feet away from me and sounds like this. Garbage. I chose this lavalier setup because it has an eighth inch jack which can plug directly into my Canon M50. It's just easy. It's also good for any subject that's going to be moving around a lot. Wireless lavaliers can get a bit pricey, but you can get a wired one for under $100. Just remember that you're attached to the camera when you stand up, or you're going to be spending more than that to get your camera repaired. Wireless lavaliers have two parts, a transmitter and a receiver. You set them both to the same channel, plug in the receiver to your camera, and wire your subject up with the transmitter. Pin the mic on their lapel, and you're all set. But you could also use something like a shotgun mic on a boom pole, which hangs directly over your subject's head. That would also put your microphone close to your subject's mouth. Most shotgun mics have an XLR connection though, and you'd need something like this Beach Tech adapter if you're shooting on a DSLR. I'll often use a shotgun mic mounted on a boom if I'm at a location interviewing several people throughout the day. It's easier not having to wire up subjects each time with a wireless lav. Instead, they can just come in, sit down under the microphone, and they're good to go. Or, and this is one of my favorites, if you're recording voiceover that's going to run under other footage, you could use something like this little Zoom recorder. Zoom recorders record audio on an internal memory card, so I don't recommend using them as your audio source for your video record because the audio is not synced to your picture. If you do, you'll have to sync up all your audio in the edit, which people do, but in my opinion is more time and effort than it's worth. I just use the Zoom for voiceover. The Zooms come in a few sizes. The H4n is a little over $200 and has XLR inputs. But the little H1s are cheaper, great for vloggers and podcasters, and pretty much anyone. They've got a great pickup pattern and produce exceptionally clean audio for your buck. I love the Zoom H1s. You can pick one up for a little over $100 and they're great for doing voiceovers. In fact, that's what I'm using when you hear my voice under title cards. Like now, this is a Zoom H1. And since we're here in this title card now, let's move on to the second thing you should do to record great sound for your videos. Number two, soundproof your room. Let me tell you a little story with regards to soundproofing. When I first decided to record in this room, there was nothing on the floors, just hardwood. And it was super echoey. So I threw down this shag rug and that reduced the echo, but it still wasn't enough. And then I put down this blanket over here, and that reduced the echo a little more. But it still wasn't enough. And then I hung up these theater-grade blackout curtains. And then, only then, did I reduce that echo to an acceptable level. And I'll be honest, it's still a little echoey for me, but short of hanging soundproof blankets on every wall and the ceiling, which wouldn't look very nice, it's the best I'm gonna get. So the moral of the story is if you're using the right mic, but you're still getting a lot of echo, 
Kill your echo by throwing blankets on your floor or hanging them on your walls. Other material that can be used as soundproofing includes egg crate foam, cork, or foam core, or you can go on Amazon and buy 12 by 12 acoustic foam tiles for $20 a four pack. They even come in different colors, so you can get fancy. I'll leave a link in the description. Try placing whatever you're using in different parts of the room. Often, wood floor is the worst offender, but it'll take a little trial and error to find the best placement. Lastly, the third thing you can do to record clean audio for your videos is monitor your levels. Levels, or audio levels, simply refers to the strength of your audio signal as measured by your recording device. Ideally, you should wear headphones in the field as you record so you can make sure the audio that you're recording isn't distorted or maybe too soft. But some DSLRs don't have a headphone jack. And also, if you're filming yourself, you usually don't want to appear on camera with headphones. So set up your levels before you record and remember your settings. Most DSLRs have a manual setting for audio. Use it, it is your friend. To do this, set your audio on manual and look for the levels. They're the bars that move as you speak. Do a test by counting down from 10 before you shoot to make sure your levels are hitting where they should. You should be in the green, sometimes the yellow and never the red. Then pull your footage into an edit and listen to it to make sure you're not getting distortion. And when you bring your dialogue into the edit, your audio levels should generally rest somewhere between negative 18 decibels and negative six decibels on your audio meter. So do a test of your levels before you shoot and remember what your settings are so you can put everything back in that place before you hit record. Okay, so these three things should help you get clean audio when you're shooting. At some point, I'll do a more detailed video about microphone pickup patterns and types of microphones. But for now, if you pay attention to these three things, you should be able to eliminate a majority of your audio issues. Use an external microphone, soundproof your room, and monitor your levels. Okay, leave a comment down below if you try any of these things and see improvements. Okay, party people, let's do the tip. <laughs> As I mentioned, lavalier microphones are great for DIY filming. And when hooking one up to yourself, the best way to conceal the wire for the transmitter is to simply feed it up your shirt so it's out of sight. However, if you're wearing a jacket or cardigan, sometimes that wire makes its way out from behind your jacket into the shot. And that just looks sloppy. So to prevent the transmitter wire from making its YouTube debut, after I pin the mic to my lapel, I often just take a little piece of painter's tape and tape the wire to the inside of my jacket. That way it stays put and I never have to worry about it peeking out to say hello. Okay, as usual, I will put links in the description for all the mics I used in this video as well as the Zoom recorder. And if you found any of this helpful, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe down below so you know when the next one is out, and I will catch you next time.